All right, here's hoping that our technical difficulties are done. I think we're all set. I can hear myself in my own ear, so I'll wear my sweet, sweet headphone. Wait a few seconds. Uh, sorry, we are a little late. Uh, I apologize to those just joining us, and I'll edit out this part and post uh, because I found out you can do that. Uh, we were having some microphone issues. I still don't know 100% what is wrong, but I think it's working now. Uh, if you are joining us for the third or fourth or fifth time, um, <laughs> hi. We were having technical difficulties again. Uh, my name is Chris Dorman. Uh, I'm with the Maine State Library. I am the STEM librarian. And because we have had torrential rain, rain, snow, a 50 degree day, and two major windstorms, and that was just last week, I figured that this week would be an awesome topic of let's talk about weather. Uh, I was also going to do it outside, but as we talk about weather, the sky keeps getting darker and darker, and I didn't want to start this and then have to run inside with my laptop and all of my gear because it started raining, because we are supposed to get rain this evening, which is going to be awesome because we're making um, nine gauges. Uh, so first thing we're going to do is I said we were going to make a, a um, wind gauge. It's not really a wind gauge. A wind gauge means that you can actually test the strength and the speed of the wind. Um, we're not going to do that today. What we're going to do is more of a, a weather vane. So if you guys have ever gone through the country and you've seen those giant arrows with usually like sometimes they have horses or they'll have roosters or some sort of animal and it's basically just a big arrow. Well, that that shows the farmers or whoever happens to be going by what direction uh, the wind is going to go. So that's what we're going to make today. So first things first, uh, I'm going to go a little fast and that's because we're making two things today. I got really, really excited. Uh, if I go too fast, you can just listen, talk to me on the chat and then we can always go back and you guys can watch the video and pause it when you need it. And again, you guys know where I am. So just buzz me and I will always answer questions. So. Are you ready to go? Let's make this weather vane. All right, so very first step, you are gonna find something round. Now I know a lot of people were like, well, I don't have anything round that's big. I went to the kitchen. I found my soup pot. I traced my soup pot and I cut out a circle. Now again, if you're littles, make sure you have an adult help you because cutting cardboard is, is a little difficult. You gotta have hand strength, okay? So be careful. And what you're going to do, and again, I'm going to go fast, but we can always go back and watch the video later, okay? So what you're going to do is you're going to find the middle. So I crisscrossed all of these circles, found the middle that wasn't really the middle. I tried my best, okay? Going to find the middle, and then I made a compass. Ooh, okay? Now, this is going to show us, if we orient it right upstairs, Okay, it's gonna show us what we're gonna do. Okay, so we have our cardboard compass. So this is gonna tell us in which direction the wind is going to blow, correct? Next, now this is where you can use a straight stick, you can use a straw, you can use anything that'll hold its shape, okay? I happen to have, you guys can see this little pointy thing, we have a bunch of skewers because like five years ago we made shish kebabs and <laughs> apparently we needed a hundred of these, so they're everywhere. So you're going to take that straight stick and in some more cardboard, you can make a fin, just like an airplane, a tail, and then you can make an arrow. I painted mine so you guys can see it on camera. And then be it a straw, be it a stick, be it whatever you find that's straight, you guys are going to attach those. Oops, which way am I going? I want my fin to go this way. Now. Because this is a skewer and it has a pointy end, I can just kind of slide it on. But you guys can tape it on, you guys can glue it on. It, it doesn't really matter how you get it on, just as long as it kind of stays. And again, this is gonna help catch the wind so that way it shows the direction it's going. We're gonna take that front, we're gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna stick it on, bloop, and look. Now we have our weather, our weather vane. Okay, so this is what's gonna tell us and hopefully, if, if we've made it correctly and it works, it's going to give us that direction of wind, okay? 
And again, I apologize, I'm going a little fast, but it's because you guys can go back and watch it later. And because I got excited and I said, hey, let's make two things this week. Now, remember how I said I had that hole in my cardboard? You know, my best tip for holding things? Pencil. Take that pencil, poke it through my hole. Whoops, wrong way. Eraser side up. We're gonna go down this way. Bloop, eraser side up, okay? So now we have something to put our arrow on. Now, if we do this, well, maybe if I balance it just right. No. How are we going to just stick there and still move? Any ideas? I mean, I could tape it, but if I tape it, then it won't move, right? And remember, we want this to move with the wind. So we're going to hold our pencil, and this will move with the wind. So we can't tape it. I can't glue it. How do you think, what's the best way to attach it? So there are a lot of different ways. Uh, woo! Oh no, I was gonna use a push pin, but now I've dropped the push pin. And if I can't find the push pin, oh, I found it, hold on. <laughs> Crisis averted, push pin found. I have a push pin. Uh, I'm gonna take that push pin carefully so as not to stab myself, put it on top, and, you know, line everything up. Does that look like a weather vane to you guys? What do you think? And what you want to do is you'll take your north and line it up with north. And the easiest way to do that, again, this isn't going to be exact because we're not gauging, okay, we won't, we won't really know how to measure. But uh, if you look at the sun, remember that it rises in the east and sets in the west, okay? So you could find the sun, you could be like, well, it comes up over there in the morning. You take your east, you'd say, okay, so that's about east. And then you'd let this go with the wind and you'd be like, oh, look, the wind appears to be going southwest, northeast. Or if you really, 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 really want to be technical, you can just get like, some leaves and throw them in the air and be like, they came in my face. This is the way the wind is blowing. So there you go. That's how you make a homemade weather vane. Pretty easy, right? And again, I know I'm going fast, but because I decided we were going to make two separate things this week, we got to go a little faster. Now, there are several different ways to make a rain gauge. And while we make this rain gauge, we're actually going to talk about weather because weather is amazing. And if you study weather, what type of scientist are you? Do, do you guys know? I am a scientist who studies weather. While we do that, I'm going to show you guys my, my original rain gauge blew away. So we've learned from this because now my original weighing gauge that I made to show to you guys is somewhere in my neighborhood. And to my neighbors, I apologize. I'm sorry if you find it. I don't need to return it to recycle it. Okay. So what a rain gauge is going to do is it's going to tell us approximately how much rain we've gotten in our backyards. Now, remember when you're setting up your rain gauge, if you set it under trees, oh, that probably won't work. If you set it under your house, or right where eaves come off the roof, where all the water just shh. Do you think that's gonna give you an accurate reading? Probably not. So you wanna find a really big open space and that's where you wanna set your rain gauge. You wanna check it probably every day just to make sure you know what's going on. And the best part is, is like a scientist, every day you can check it, try and do it at the same time, and you can mark off in a journal or a piece of paper and you can actually track and send it in. Because again, it's April, Citizen Science Month. So there are two different ways to make a rain gauge, okay? If you have something hard, like my trusty mason jar, uh, I'm lucky enough that I'm pretty sure this will not blow away. And if it does, we've got bigger problems, okay? Uh, and all I did was I took uh, a ruler and I measured, and I think if I stick my fingers in, you guys can see, every half inch. Now, is this exact? No, I know there are going to be a lot of people that are probably going to be in the comments like, well, that's not exact. You have to take in the volume of the container and yada, yada. It's citizen science, guys. It's 
backyard stuff that people can do because it's fun. I understand this won't be exact. I understand that that we're not actually calculating to the microliter. We don't have to. We're just having fun. Okay. And what you're going to do is if you don't believe these and you want to get a little more scientific, after you collect all your rainwater, bring it into the house, and you can use a measuring cup. Now, I just found out that I actually don't have an honest to God measuring cup. So I have this thing. I really don't know what that's for. And I have this thing. <laughs> but I don't actually have a measuring cup in my house. Um, uh, well, at least one that I could read in milliliters. But what you're going to do is you're going to take those measuring cups or graduated cylinder if you're really cool. Uh, and just carefully make sure you're going to take all that water. And you know what? You can't really see anything. Imaginary water. Hold on. I've got water. Now, this is just plain water that I'm making a mess with because I dyed it blue so you guys could see it. It's just clear water. You can't see it online. So all you're going to do, this is my rainwater. It rained a lot. So if you read it on the gauge, it's about an inch of water. It's a lot of water. Take it, pour it in, make sure I don't spill any of it. And right now, that's at five ounces. Five ounces, 30 teaspoons, or 150 milliliters. And there's still more left in there. So you can get pretty accurate readings if you want to with this kind of thing. So this is one option. Another option, which I think is a little more decorative and fun, is we take our soda bottles because you guys know how much I love my empty soda bottles. We're going to take the cap, throw it away. What we're going to do is, again, with an adult, you're going to take your scissors or your knife. You guys know how I like my knife. And you're going to go, you know how there's kind of that imaginary line where it starts to go, okay? Just like when we made our self-watering planters, we're going to go probably an inch and a half, two inches down, and I'm going to cut the top off very carefully. And while I'm cutting this off, we can talk. So did anybody answer the question? Uh, so the question was, uh, and I don't know if I did it here or back when we were having technical difficulties, does anybody know? What a scientist, I'm sorry, I'm sawing through this. Does anybody know what a scientist who studies weather is called? So those people who are on the news every night and they let us know if it's going to rain or if it's going to snow, what are they called? Any ideas? Let me know in the chat. Okay. So while you guys are thinking and you're answering, I'm going to continue on and, and you guys can just kind of listen in the background while you're typing. Now, again, if you're using scissors, or a razor blade or something like that, be very careful. And also, I don't know if you guys know this, but this is really, really sharp. So be very careful you don't get cut, okay? Uh, and then we're gonna take our ruler, or in my case, I have a tape measure. So I'm gonna take my tape measure, and I am going to stick it in, or I could do it on the outside, I guess, too. Okay, whoops. Hold on, let me shorten this. Whoop. Okay, and we're going to mark every half an inch. All right. I'm going to take my pencil. Oops. And I'm going to mark every half an inch. We'll go about here. Now, again, I know a lot of people are going to be saying, well, Chris, if you have a rain catcher, you know, you have this area here. This is a different volume than this because of the dimples. Now, a lot of people put rocks in here, and you can do that. Remember that story about how my original rain catcher is somewhere in my neighborhood because the wind took it? You're going to want to weigh these down. It's not like the mason jar. The mason jar has got some weight to it. This, it, there's another one that's somewhere in my neighborhood. So you're going to want to put something in here. Now, I've seen people put rocks in here. I've also seen people put clay in. 
and then they line it up with this line here because this will be your zero line. And again, if you're going to measure, this is zero, and then you go half an inch, inch, and just continue up. Okay. Um, I don't have any rocks in my yard because I just raked. Also, my backyard is a mud pit, so we're not going to go in the backyard. So just use your imagination and squint your eyes and pretend that there's either clay or rocks in here. Okay. And then what you're going to do is you're going to take your top. And then, just like our self watering planter, there you go. And then every day, when it rains, well, I hope it doesn't rain every day. I'd like some sunshine soon. Every time it rains, go out, take your top off. Remember, shake it because you want to get all that rainwater off, and then you can measure and write it down in your science journal so you can keep track of, of how many times and how much rain you get over the course of a week or a month, maybe even all summer. How cool would that be to have all that data? And then you guys could send it into the local meteorologist. That's the word we're looking for. The person who studies weather is a meteorologist. You can send it into your local meteorologist and be like, hey, just so you know, my house in this town got this much rainwater from this state to this state. That's kind of cool, right? You guys could be actual scientists. Well, you're already scientists, but you could talk to other scientists. I'm working on some guest speakers, so hopefully we'll get there. But either way, now you guys have a homemade rain gauge. Make sure you mark. You have a homemade weather vane. Sorry, I had to take it apart because I needed the pencil. Ooh. And now you guys can put this all together. Go outside, hopefully before it rains. And then uh, let me know in the comments what kind of weather you guys discovered or what kind of weather you reported. Because remember, as scientists, we observe, we document, we report, and we collect data over and over and over again. And eventually, we'll see trends. And we'll notice that in the morning, the wind goes from the southwest. I don't really know if it does. I'm not that good a weatherman or woman in this case. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, let me know in the comments what you thought. And again, I know I went fast, but this will be up in just a few minutes so you guys can uh, watch it again. If you have any questions, let me know. My name is Chris Dorman. I work for the Maine State Library as the STEM librarian. And uh, thanks for dealing with all this stuff with the technical difficulties. It's appreciated. I'll see you guys next Wednesday at 3.30 for more Science Online. Have an awesome rest of the week. Bye now.